6.35 is our time here on The Morning Brew on CNC3 television and cnc3.co.tt. Remember, you can continue to stream the show via our CNC3 mobile app so you don't miss a moment of any of the newsmaking interviews that we've got for you today. Speaking of newsmaking, uh, we saw a release coming from the Alliance for State Action to End Gender-Based Violence coming out yesterday. And basically, they have described violence against women and girls as a national emergency. That is the language that they're using, a national emergency, violence against women and girls. Not just domestic violence, but femicide, the killing of women and girls, is a national emergency. It needs a national action plan, and that plan has many different parts, including, of course, national security, education, social services, and so on. And they also are challenging men's associations and organizations to stand up and show solidarity with regard to this issue of violence against women and girls. And um, I've got on the line with me this morning uh, Asiya Mohammed. She is the Chief Executive Officer of Conflict Women Limited. And Asiya, I'm sure that the sentiments echoed in this statement from the ASA. These, these are things that you have been saying for quite some time now, that this is a national emergency, that femicide is nothing to sneeze at, is it? That's, that's correct, you're absolutely right. Um, and Conflict Women is happy to be part of the National Alliance um, for State Action to end gender-based violence. And I think we all need to acknowledge and agree in this country. So if government can actually agree that this is a national emergency, I think that can be the main foundation and the main point for us to move forward in terms of finding common ground, but also offering solutions. So within the past few days after Andrea Barrett's murder, we had another 15-year-old who was kidnapped from Blanchichet's Road in Arima. You know, I'm looking at the news again today. We just had a 16-year-old who was shot, a 16-year-old girl who was shot. Many of these attacks, most of them are happening against women and girls. So we also need to recognize the disproportionate impact. So we're looking at a little bit under two weeks' time, and we are seeing two young girls who've been murdered, Right, and another one who was who was kidnapped and who, who went missing. Um, this is this is not acceptable. Is this the Trinidad and Tobago that we plan to live in? No. The statement from the ESA yesterday quoted some statistics, and to illustrate it like this: if you line up three women, one of the three women would have experienced domestic violence. If you line up five women one of those five women would have been sexually assaulted. And chances are, depending on where you, where you pull that, that sample of women from, um, it could be all of them, it could be most of them. It depends on, on, on where you pull that sample from. And somehow, no one seems to think that this is troubling that this is a national emergency. Why is there this laid back attitude almost? Um, why are people risking COVID-19 to highlight these issues? Why is that necessary, Asiya? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's a really great question. I feel like for too long, we've had a lack of responses. I mean, all of last year, Conflict Women, for example, has issued so many press releases. Every time we issue a press release, another woman has been murdered or killed, and we're making the same calls on government, right? Um, the Alliance for State Action as well, the same calls. Where is our national strategic action plan to end gender-based violence? It's been sitting in front of the cabinet since 2016, and it is not yet approved. And the situation is getting worse and worse. And while we wait for policies, while we wait for government to effect and impact legislation, there is a human cost. And the cost is many women and girls are paying with their lives. So the government needs to prioritize 
gender-based violence within the national um, politics, within what is happening. And I want to repeat, I want to say this very clearly, gender-based violence is not a political issue. It is a human rights issue. It is a woman's rights issue. Irrespective of your political affiliation, it is not okay for women to be unsafe taking public transportation in this country. You know, I mean, it, it is not okay. We have a we have a human right, a right to safety, which is not being respected. It's not being guaranteed. It's not being protected. And the government of Trinidad and Tobago needs to recall that this is 2021. This is the year in which it presents its human rights record, the Universal Periodic Review to the United Nations. It is also called upon this year in 2021 to report on its obligations under the United Nations Convention for the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women. So what exactly will they be reporting on? The number of rise in femicides, the number of young women being you know, increasingly kidnapped? And not to say that you know the government has not been trying, but I think when you look at how effective your solutions are, because I mean, I heard the attorney general, um, you know, on several different television stations over the past couple nights. But when you look at um, a lot of what he is saying in terms of what government has been doing, there is one way that you can monitor and evaluate the impact of what it is you're trying to do. If you are trying time and time again, but you are seeing a consistent rise in femicides in this country, then it tells all of us one thing, that what you are doing is not working. It's as simple as that. So you need to go back to like to the blank blackboard. You need to start from scratch and we need to treat with this issue as a national emergency. Get all the players involved. What are we doing now to make sure women and girls are safe using public transportation. Mm -hmm. What has happened since Andrea Barrett has been murdered, right? We need to have those conversations immediately. I think what's happened is that people were marching and lighting candles, and that's about it. The action and activity seems to be only on one side, that of the citizens of the country. I find it disturbing, though, that, um, you know, the men in, in government, the men in parliament, have wives, daughters, girlfriends, sisters, mothers, grandmothers, aunts, nieces. Why are they not mobilized to do something? Why are they not mobilized to do something? And perhaps our female parliamentarians need to raise their voices as well. But, you know, that's another topic. Asiya, in terms of legislation, do we have enough legislation right now as it stands to protect women and girls in this country? Do they need to, 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 to pull it out of, of the dusty cupboard and, and dust it off and perhaps, you know, reformat it? What is required at this time? Yeah, so I think it's a combination of things, and this is why the National Strategic Action Plan I referred to is so critical, right? Um, because it would bring together, because you're not just going to solve gender-based violence by effecting more legislation. What is required is effective implementation mm -hmm. of existing legislation. So we've had a Domestic Violence Act for so many decades. It's been amended last year. This is something the Alliance has strongly lobbied for. So we're happy to have those amendments, but women are still being beaten and abused all over this country. So how effective have we been at implementing the act? And this is where this morning I wanna challenge the government of Trinidad and Tobago to approve the National Strategic Action Plan to end gender-based violence. This is so important. The Prime Minister um, has spoken time and time again about community action plans to end gender-based violence. Where is our national strategic action plan? We have to effect implementation. I mean, there's, you know, you're hearing all the politicians are responding. We're in parliament, we're, we're debating um, these bills, you know, we're going back for new legislation. But what about implementation? Mm. We already have significant amounts of legislation. Implementation. 
Who is responsible for implementation? Isn't it the ordinary citizens like you and me who work in those government ministries and those state agencies? Isn't it we the people who also are responsible for implementation, who also must take responsibility for making Trinidad and Tobago safe, Asiya? Well, you know, we have we the people who are using a system and we have we the people who are working in government ministries, right, and trying to effectively implement a system. Now, the problem is when you have the Gender and Child Affairs Division within the office of the Prime Minister with very few staff members and they are under-resourced, they may work from now until midnight every night, but it's not going to be enough to solve the problem of gender-based violence in this country. When you have a gender-based violence unit within the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service that has no additional budget or no additional funding, you are sending a very clear message to all the people, to we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, that gender-based violence has not been prioritized by your government. And that is not what we want to see. Again, I will repeat, this is not a political issue. This is a human rights issue, and I urge the government to recall that you have to present the UPR, Trinidad and Tobago's record of human rights to the United Nations in just a few months' time. Mm -hmm. The world is looking on. It's not just a local issue. And, of course, depending on how well we do with that report, it could impact uh, our country's future in terms of, you know, economically, financially, and otherwise, because human rights, that's something that certain countries take very, very seriously. Not so, Asiya. And definitely. And just to say, in the last review of our Universal Periodic Review, there was an entire section devoted to violence against women in which specific recommendations were made to the government of Trinidad and Tobago. So, I mean, as, as a government, you know, there are many things that we need to do in terms of the government itself. Um, protect your citizens, provide the right to safety, the right to safe transportation. We need to act now. Why are women and girls consistently being murdered in this country? And is going to Parliament and debating and passing more legislation and further amendments when we have no national gender policy? It's almost as old as I am. It's still gathering dust somewhere within the cabinet. Um, how, how are we going to move forward? Mm. Asiya, we're going to have to leave it there for now, but I think we've tossed out a couple challenges to the powers that be. Let's see what their move is. It's your move, people. Asiya, thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning, and we'll chat with you again soon. Okay, thank you for having me. We take a quick break, and there'll be more on The Morning Brew. Don't go far.